right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox. And this week, I'll be showing you how to generate this procedural subsurface sour candy texture inside of Octane for Cinema 4D. So if this is a look you're interested in achieving, follow along and let's get started. Okay, since I don't want this tutorial to be too long and we're just gonna primarily be focusing on the texturing of this, I've already brought my camera in. I brought in this geometry I created a while ago. It's basically just a rounded wrecked spline swept across a squiggly spline. Um, but just in case you're interested in working on this texture on the same geometry, I'm going to throw it up on the happytoolbox.com and in the freebies section. It's not up here yet, but it'll definitely be up here by the time I post this tutorial. Okay, with that, what I want to do first is set up some base lighting for this scene. So I have my Octane render preview window down here. I'm going to grab a floor object throw that in, and then I'm going to grab in objects lights, an octane daylight object. And I feel like this is just a really nice way to set up really quick natural outdoor lighting, and that way we can focus mainly on texturing instead of lighting. And then I'm gonna take the octane daylight uh, object and do a few things. I think I kind of want the light to be a little higher than this. Be like, here, like kind of intense. And then kind of maybe backlit a little bit over here. So I kind of get this backlit edge and then pretty extreme fall off. Um, if I go into my Octane settings, I'm going to change this from direct lighting to path tracing. So it's a little bit more even. I'm gonna drop my samples down to about 800. And then um, this is obviously way too bright. So I'm gonna drop the power down to like 0.5. And then sun size. Uh, if you kind of up the sun size, it makes all your shadows way more diffuse. Um, so I'm gonna pump that up to like 17. And then on my plane geometry, I'm going to go over to C40 octane tags, throw in an octane object tag, and in my subdivision group level tab, I'm gonna knock that up to one. And that's basically gonna do the same exact thing as um, a subdivision surface would, but this is just kind of octane's optimized version of that, um, which is pretty nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my sun object. Um, and what I wanna do on it specifically is if you kind of scroll down to the sky color and sun color, um, I'm not really interested in having too much color from this in here, so I'm gonna basically turn it to white and then turn the sun color to kind of the same level of kind of color value, but desaturate it. So that way it's just Pretty nice and evenly grayscale lit. Okay, so we have just a really basic lighting setup in here. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna wanna create some materials to throw on this. So first and foremost, C4D Octane. Let's just create an Octane material. And then for the color, I'm gonna choose kind of that same pinkish background color that I had in the intro. Kinda liked how that was looking. Good. And then I want to create a new octane material. And I'm going to change it from a diffuse material to a specular material. And so this is kind of similar to some of the other th stuff we've done with snow materials or that slimy material from the liquid pole we did a while back. I'm basically going to ignore most of this stuff. I'm just going to immediately go down to transmission and change that to kind of our initial pinkish reddish hue that I want this candy to be. Let's go ahead and just throw this on two objects. And there we got like a nice crazy glass texture going on here. Uh, this is obviously not what we want. So let's go back into our material uh, and we're gonna kind of skip over most of these things at first and let's just immediately go down to medium. And so in medium, we want this to have subsurface scattering to get that jelly-like consistency. So we're going to choose scattering. And then inside of that, we're going to focus on a few things. First of all, the density, kind of how 
how much light is passing through this object. We're going to focus on the absorption and then the scattering. And in the absorption and scattering, what we want to have happen is we want kind of light to come into this object and we want to define what type of light and what color of light is coming into this object. So in absorption, let's go to C40 octane and add an RGB spectrum. And then I'm going to copy that and throw that into our scattering medium as well. And so if you just start adding colors into these, let's say, you know, in the absorption medium, let's say I just throw it to uh, blue, like this really saturated blue color. You can kind of see that, you know, this is turning it purplish. And then for scattering, if I was to just, you know, throw a blue in here again, you get this really extremely glossy dark blue look. If you start messing with density, you can see how the light is kind of scattering through this object. And really only that blue color is picking up on kind of the outer edges um, away from your lighting source. So that's a cool look to mess around with. But what I want to do is I want to uncheck invert absorption. So when I uncheck that, you'll see that instead of taking this blue color and kind of inverting itself uh, through this through this object and turning itself back into blue, what absorption generally does is this color light enters through the object and creates a complementary color on the opposite end. So you can see now it's kind of this yellowish color coming out on the opposite end. And so if you look at you know a complementary color wheel, you can see that um, we added a blue in, so therefore the primary blue is going to come out the other end as orange. And this is a little confusing, but that's why looking at a chart like this is really helpful. And again, the reason you're doing this um, is to just kind of create a much brighter material. Um, a lot of times, the if you have invert absorption on, the, the colors that are available are much more dark and saturated, and we really want kind of a light look going on here. So I'm going to change this absorption medium. We want red you know, coming out on the other end. So if I kind of look at my red zone, I want a greenish tint going on. So I'm gonna go in here, change this to kind of a green material, maybe pull the brightness down a little bit. Pull the saturation down a little bit, something like that. And then for our scattering medium, that is just true to uh, its direct color. So you can kind of see there's still a little bit of blue in here. We want this to be more of a dark red. So let's turn this to reddish hue. Kind of pull it down, desaturate it a little bit. And there we go. To be honest, it looks a lot like what I first threw on here, but I think, again, all of these pieces and parts come together to create this gummy texture. And what you can see here is on this edge, we're getting a much kind of lighter pinkish tone coming through instead of that really dark uh, color that the invert absorption creates. And what we're gonna do from here is we're going to go up to roughness and we're going to bump this float texture up. So the second I start doing that, this material becomes way more gummy-like. Get it around there. That's looking pretty good. And then down in index, I want the specular to be a little bit more prominent. And this is pretty nerdy, but you can look up kind of IOR values uh, of different materials. So like if I look up this IOR index of refraction list, um, you can see here there's kind of this sugar solution zone. And right now we are about 1.3, which is good. but um, I kind of want to pump it up. So I want to stay in between these two values, 1.49. Again, pretty nerdy, but I always think it's cool to know what the real world correlation is. So I'm going to bump this up to like 1.4. It's got a little more highlights on the edges. I'm going to keep that there. And then I'm going to leave it as it is for now. From here, I think what I want is I want another light to kind of maybe spill over to this side so we get a little more um, happening over here. You can kind of see it's getting lost now that this is way more of a gummy looking material. 
So let's go to objects, lights, and create an octane area light. And then what I always like to do is I like to kind of go into my top view, the, the one that's not referencing or rendering the camera view, go up to cameras and you can say use camera selected object as camera. So basically I have that light I just created as an object. I'm going to select it. And now I'm basically controlling that light. So you can see basically wherever I'm moving this camera, that is the light source. And so I want to get again, way more of this nice, uh, color kind of scattering through here. I want these edge highlights. So I'm going to go about here. Maybe make the light a little bit longer. It's looking pretty cool. It's obviously way too bright, but that helps get those edge lights and kind of fills out the color in there. For the power, I'm going to pull that way down here. Honestly, I just want a little bit of light picked up here. It's feeling pretty good. I kind of zoomed it in a little bit more. So now I'm getting these little edges going on. Go back. Um, I think I want this background color to be a little more pinkish. It's kind of blending together. So I'm going to change that to more of it's feeling a little better. It's kind of popping this red out now. Um, okay, so we have our base gummy material. Again, pretty straightforward. We're just using subsurface scattering. We're using roughness to kind of create this jelly look. And now the most important part, we want to get those candy crystalline textures going on. And the way we're going to do this, it's similar to how we did our crystals in our snow texture. But what we want to do is we want to go to objects in Octane and choose an Octane scatter object. Take our octane scatter object. I'm just going to, to keep it kind of related to what I'm doing, I'm going to stack it. So I'm going to stack it in this first plane, uh, squiggly object. And then in octane scatter, um, instead of type vertex, I don't want this to be on every single vertice, all the sugar granules. I want it to evenly go over the surface. So I'm going to change this to surface. And then I'm going to pull this plane inside. So immediately you get these like weird balls it kind of looks like a weird anatomy project but as you saw it was super fast which is the best part about octane scatter objects versus cloner objects and then what i want i do not want obviously just simple spheres in here i'm going to go down to platonic and grab one of these and these work super well to kind of imitate the crystal structure of sugar um, you know some hard edges so i'm just going to make these really tiny and I'm going to duplicate it from a change it to a tetra. That up a little bit, duplicate it again, and change it to an octa. Duplicate it again, Bucky. So that way we have kind of these four random crystal structures and that way you won't just see the same object over and over and over. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to stack them under our octane scatter object. And you can see right away we have kind of tiny uh, crystals. They've inherited the texture that is currently on the plane. So we're going to need to make a separate texture for those. But what I want to do with the octane scatter object is I want way more of these pieces and I might want to uh, kind of scale down the sugar crystals as well. So for count, I mean, I think we're going to want a ton of these. 35. It's feeling pretty good. And then I am going to scale these down a little bit. So I'm just going to select all four of them. Scale them down. It's feeling pretty good. And then I'm going to create a new octane material. Once again, change it to a specular material. And then in roughness, I want this to be a little bit rough so it's not perfectly clear. Let's 
go ahead and throw this on there so we can see what we're doing. So put these actually on the geometry. There we go. Starting to get a little bit more clear picture. And that specular material, I want these to be a lot shinier uh, than the base of this object. So I'm going to go into the index, pump this up to 1.7. So obviously these are getting outside of the IOR range, but um, we want these to look way more crystalline and kind of sour looking. So pump the index up, that's the easy way to do it. Um, in common, I'm going to check on fake shadows as well. And so if I turn off fake shadows, you can kind of see some of them are like blending into the object a little bit. And I just really want these to all stand out as much as possible to make it look like they're sugar. So I'm going to turn that on and you can immediately see a bunch more of them are kind of popping through. So that is looking pretty good. I might scale these down a little bit more. And then I'm going to duplicate that octane scatter object, stack it under my other plane and drag that other surface in there. Okay. So this is looking decent, but I still think we need way more pieces of sugar. These are probably still a little bit too big. Um, it kind of looks more like pretzel salt right now than anything. So I'm going to go back to these and we're just going to pump these way up. So like, yeah, let's go to like 30,000 instead. And then I'm going to scale these platonics down way farther yeah this is looking more like sugar now and then i'm just going to select a couple of the platonics scale them a little bit bigger so we have a little bit of variance going on and i'm actually going to delete that other scatter object because i'm way happier with this Duplicate it, pull this plane in. There we go, that's looking much better. That looks a lot more like sugar. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it for the texture portion. Um, again, with subsurface scattering, a lot of it depends on your lighting. So that's why I kind of set up these two lighting systems. Uh, maybe I'll mess with this a little bit more. a little bit better. I'll turn this down a little bit more. The top's kind of highlighted of this a tiny bit more. As you can see, this is all tweaking and, you know, the, changing the lighting um, on this setup, especially with subsurface scattering, kind of drastically changes the look of this object. But it's a pretty sturdy setup overall, um, you know, just mess with all the material values, etc. But I think this is feeling pretty good, so I'm going to pause it here. Um, another quick tip that I always like to do um, for statics is if you turn on kind of this focus pick focus button here. I can choose that and as long as I have an octane camera set up, I can kind of pull focus on a specific point. So if I go to my camera settings and turn on orthographic, kind of go to this depth of field zone. Um, once I click focus on, this kind of autofocus turns off. And so I can obviously mess with the focal depth, but what focus picking does is I can kind of click so I'm going to click on a certain edge and then on my aperture, I'm going to bring that aperture level up pretty extremely. And now you can see um, where I'm focus picking is really in focus. And then, you know, because that aperture is up so high and the focal depth is up so high, I'm able to blur kind of this background out. So you can see if I click back here. Kind of tries to do the same thing. Now the foreground is a little blurred out, background's a little blurred out. So yeah, 
Hopefully this candy texture helps you guys out. If you'd like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would help us out a ton. We're gonna keep putting out a bunch of tutorials. Um, if you have any suggestions for tutorials, we'd love to hear them in the comment sections below. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. Again, this kind of strip model will be in our freebie section at the top here. All right, I'll see you next time.